I couldn't get a fight, man. And it was frustrating because I, you know, I, I'm always training, man. Even when I was going through this medical stuff, I was training. So I was ready to take a fight at any time. And Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. The last time we spoke, it was ahead of your, your UFC fight against Josh Parisian. Uh, you had that fight. You you basically fought out your contract. You separated ways with the UFC. Take me into what was going on during that time after that, the next, let's say, half of that year. Yeah. Uh, the rest of that year, was it was a pretty rough year for me. I had some medical issues I had that popped up like um, – right after that fight and I had to do a few surgeries and stuff like that. Uh, it also didn't help, you know, being released from my contract uh, with UFC, especially the way it, it happened, you know, it's like, I mean, it's a fight I definitely thought I won, but you know, what can you do? It's, it is what it is, right? But yeah, man, just to, just to kind of have that happen and I had to go through this medical stuff. so. For me, like what would have helped, I think, with with that that last loss is getting right back on the on the bike and trying to get another fight, right? And the fact that I had the medical stuff pop up and I couldn't even do that, you know, like that was to me would have been my outlet to kind of to get over it, you know. So I had to sit on that loss for a while while, while taking care of this uh, medical issue. And um, yeah, man, I. It was rough. The rest of that 20, 2021 was rough, even early 2022 when I still couldn't get a fight. Um, definitely uh, rough, but, you know, it, that, that to me, that's uh, that's what makes these uh, next triumphs, you know, even better and more sweeter. Um, the medical issues, was that something that happened during your UFC run or was it something that happened like after everything was over? Uh, no. So it was actually a, it was an issue that I've had for a while. Um, it was kind of something, uh, the doctors here on Guam aren't too great. So it was something that bothered me before. It's like a stomach, stomach and intestinal issue. Um, the doctors here aren't so great. So they kind of gave me the, um, false sense of security that it's something that you can manage moving forward and man that's definitely not what happened man i've always i've had a lot of problems with it throughout you know the last few um years of fighting um and it bothered me a lot uh basically i had a well they found out i had multiple holes in my colon and and uh it was, it was a painful thing to have to deal with you know so yeah it was definitely it had nothing to do with fighting of course so that's what made it a little bit harder on me to deal with you know like man I could, it would have been easier to deal with if it's like an injury from fighting, but it wasn't, you know, but, um, you know, I'm glad I, it's something I took care of though. For mm -hmm. sure. Is this something that's lasting? Does it have lasting effects or is it all good now? Like, uh, no, I, 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 w I went to a specialist. I went to a specialist in, um, Seattle, Washington, out of Swedish, Swedish medical. And, um, man, they took care of me. It was, it was a lengthy, thing because i had to go back for it was like two procedures and then well no it was two procedures and i had to do one where they had to do like a full-on scan of everything so it just kind of took long to, to to take care of but uh you know it's something i had to do yeah i noticed during that time that you were going back to washington quite a few times i didn't know that you were going through any medical issues yeah i i think I went right after my fight in June and then I had to go back another four times that year. So it was like back and forth, but, uh, but yeah, it's just something I had to do and take care of it, you know? Well, at least you but got to see, I'm all good the now. Seahawks. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you got yeah. to see the Seahawks. I took play, advantage, right? man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, I gotta, you know, make the best of it, which is what Dude. I did. And a lot of people, like you said, a lot of people thought I was just going out for vacation, you know, L little yeah. did they know I was kind of taking care of some, uh, medical stuff but you know hey man that's how i am yeah. is just make the best of everything for sure and and then you get back into the cage in in november for brawl mm -hmm. which is your promotion how did it feel man after such a long layoff and and getting that medical issue taken care of just to be able to compete yeah it was uh it felt good man i, I really i was trying to fight um uh, you know with my old management team when i finally was able to fight Oh man, I you know it's just they couldn't. For some reason, these fights were falling through, and I just wasn't getting fights, man. I was supposed to fight in Fury FC, 
a couple times, and supposedly something happened, and it just it was I couldn't get a fight, man, and it was frustrating because I was you know I, I'm always training, man. Even when I was going through this medical stuff, I was training, so I was ready to take a fight at any time, and just the frustration of not being able to have a fight, and then once Brawl popped up, I actually had no intention of fighting in Brawl six weeks out from the event you know i was just trying to uh get the matches going and um at some point you know one of one of my partners was like man you want to you should just fight in it you know and i was like you know what let's let's do it man let's let's uh just do it so it was just a good way for me to get back in there and uh get my fight going or you know get a fight get a fight man. well you know that's what happens a lot of times with uh fighters that are promoters at the same time they end up fighting for their own promotion yeah. someone, something happens or some shit you know yeah take gotta take matters into your own hands i guess <laughs> yeah yeah and at least you got a win over mcgregor right that's that's a, yeah that's yeah a <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> when did you get the call from from ryzen man you fought for them before you know you guys have a great you have a great relationship with them and the matchmakers um talk about take us through how this this matchup got put together um yeah, well, you know, they actually reached out to me in October um, to fight, but I was actually like right before they messaged me, I was had a trip planned out, and uh, also at the same time, I was still with my other uh, management team, and um, you know, I couldn't uh, commit to them directly, and my term with my management team was just about to be over, so it was just kind of a complicated situation, so. I, I, I messaged Shingo and I was like, you know, um, I think I'll be able to commit to something soon, especially when I get back from my trip, my vacation. And um, yeah, they, they happened to reach out to me in uh, early, I think it was early January, early to mid of January about fighting on this one, you know, and right away I said yes. Um, even uh, my, my last management team, they were trying to get me into... Uh, around that same time actually it was just right before ryzen got a hold of me the second time about uh going to pfl and i just had this gut instinct man i was like kind of want to stick around and see if ryzen's gonna offer me again you know i i tell everyone i just i love it there man i i feel i feel at home there the rule set there everything i don't have to travel so far so i just said you know what? let me let me wait and see on this this fight and man sure enough a few weeks after that they they hit me up and um uh, I was excited. It's like it felt like it was it was meant to be at that point. The the matchup too, man. You get to face probably the number one heavyweight in Japan, which is always a good opportunity, right? Oh yeah, for sure. He's he's done a lot in those short in that short career of his so far. Mm -hmm. What do you think of uh, the skill set that he has, and and him developing from a sumo sumo wrestler? I don't even know what you sumo fighter to like a, a mixed martial artist. Yeah. Uh, in that short amount of time, I, I tell people he's man, he's pretty impressive. Apparently, he's only been training for about two years, maybe a little bit longer. But for what he's accomplished in that short amount of time, is pretty impressive. And he's you know you can tell he's athletic, strong. He's got some speed and powerful. He may lack in the skills department, but the fact that he picked up that that fast is it's impressive. You know, I think he's I think he's a good fighter for for such a short career. And he, he was like massive at one point and then he had to lose all the weight. Do you believe that guys like that, the strength stays with them? I, I think if they cut the weight down right, yeah, I think it does. With him, it, it, it seems like he, you know, he still, he still has some good strength on him from what I can see. And he's pretty agile too, which is surprising to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's athletic, man, for a big guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's a it's a fun matchup, man. Do you, where do you feel like he he excels at? Like, where do you see him doing really well? Um, you know, I pick up that he has pretty good, um, you know, leg kicks. You can tell he has power in his hands. Uh, you definitely don't want to get hit by him, especially a clean shot. Um, but yeah, I just I feel like he's he's quick for a big guy and has some power, and he throws some pretty good leg kicks. I see that. Uh you you have a new gym that you opened is that something that was in the works for a while or did that just come to you in a dream or what what happened with that <laughs> yeah so it's it's actually a branched off of another uh business i was in which was uh 
I was uh, basically I was like like a vendor doing bids for the um, public and private schools, sports equipment and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I just started with that, and you know, I've it's always I've always gone back and forth between wanting to do a gym and not wanting to do a gym, and the just the way everything fell into place, I. I was like, man, you know what? Let me let me make a gym focusing on stand up on Guam, you know, like boxing and kickboxing. We have a lot of jujitsu schools on Guam, you know, and, and I just I kinda wanted to focus on the boxing and kickboxing side. So it all worked out. Um my mom is also a property manager and a real estate uh broker. So it was easy finding the location with her. And uh yeah, like I said, it just it, it worked out perfectly and it's great to have my own gym to train in and and um you know uh, i'm looking to start running classes and stuff like that for everyone else uh when i get back from my fight uh early to mid may so then i'll just kind of get the the business going going you know so right now it's just like your own personal gym like you train there and in, in your team yeah yeah just me and my my training partners that's all i'm using it for right now so i was i was kind of on the I was thinking about starting to run it before this fight, but man, it's, it's been so crazy trying to do the gym and everything else. And it was, it was taking a lot out of me, man. It was exhausting, you know, just from I'll train in the morning and then like rinse off real quick. And then I'm sweating again, trying to put stuff together, doing work at the gym, doing electrical, helping my friend with electrical work. And it was just like nonstop, man. And then I'll go do that and then go back to train again, you know? So yeah. After I did this, I was like, you know, what, let me hold off on classes and just focus on training, recovering, and training again, and and just really, really, one hundred percent focusing on the fight for the rest until I'm done with the fight. Do you, who are your coaches then? Are you bringing in coaches like to to run the gym as well with you, or? Um, I think when I started, just be me. I'll probably keep an eye out for you know if somebody does want to help with the coaching side. Um, but yeah, I just I want to be hands-on like very hands-on in the beginning uh you know with the way i learned my boxing and kickboxing <clears throat> i kind of want to keep that same um you know that same structure and 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 stick to that because i i like i like the way it worked for me and i feel like i can i can teach it on to a lot of other people so i'll be very hands-on early on and eventually probably get some coaches down the line Who, who's training with you now preparing for this fight Oh uh, man, I just I got like pretty much for the most part it's always been a core few guys, man. It's 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 a struggle here on Guam to get heavyweights to come out and train. And so I've noticed that within the last few years I've really been focusing a lot more on like hard drilling. Um I don't spar as much as I probably used to in my earlier in my career. So, you know, I got the guys I'm probably going with aren't big big guys, but you know, it helps me with my speed, I think. And uh, every now and then I do get some big guys that are big and strong and, you know, somewhat athletic that come in and help me just to get used to that size. But it's just kind of been like a core small group of guys that's been helping me. And it's been like that for me for for a few years, man. Even, you know, since my last Ryzen fight, all my UFC fights, it's just, it's just a small group. And they're they're not even professional fighters, you know. They're, they're just there to train and help me which is good because it can, I can focus a lot on myself and, and they're there to help me, you know, and they're not worried about their career or what they have to do for fighting, which is kind of cool in that way that they're just mm. really, really there for me, you know. It's a, a great situation for you to have people like that, man, because yeah. not everybody does, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people that are like battling for, for like time with the coaches and all that stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a, it, some of these big gyms, it's, it's really a, it's a like a dog eat dog world with each other. Yeah, 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 not for sure. Man, it's a uh, it's it's cool that you have your own spot though, because I remember you were like training in people's back, like it looked like a backyard. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the cage so, was like half. So spot, yeah, it was actually yeah. behind. It was behind the house under a steel structure, you know. Yeah. But uh, like it served its per it served its purpose, and we got a lot of good training out of it. But it's yeah. you know it's kind of cool to now have our legit you know pretty nice gym and and i am i'm still a spike 22 affiliated gym mm -hmm. uh and you know all, all my training partners from spike 22 they all you know still come over and train and 
anyone who has trained there is always welcome to come and train because at the same at the end of the day we're still the same team you know yeah that team's been around for so long even though it's like kind of here and there but they still you guys still rep spike yeah no spike's been around for a long time man even um you know my coach melker and he has actually a long uh a you know a very uh what is that history relationship with um ensign you know which is siyoshi's mm -hmm. coach um they were training together like years ago man like i think when ensign was still fighting and i don't even know what events you know they're like yeah. when i see those videos i'm like damn those are old fights <laughs> that's like be even before pride you know so yeah. yeah there's a there's a history to, um uh relationship with those two as well so yeah, yeah i don't know i'll just kind of go off that but yeah it's, it's pretty cool too yeah he's an og man like he's one of those guys that not everybody knows about but you know if you yeah. know about the guam scene then you know yeah you know, uh, you know and every time coach. we go to japan yeah every time we go to japan like all the coaches there like abiani you know like those type of guys that been in the game for so long they all know like they're they know him you know he's been in the game for so long he's just he's not that you know big name that you see out in the, in, in the u.s and stuff like that but he has a very uh a lot of relationships in japan he's he's trained there so many times even nori he's trained with nori a lot mm -hmm. i mean they they like live together from what i understand for you know plenty of times they live together he was his training partner too so yeah a lot of history there with yeah. uh, melker and spike and all those guys yeah history knowledge you know what i mean a great person to have in your corner yeah what do you want to what do you want to do in this fight, man? Because this is, I think, like, it's it's a crazy matchup, man. Like, mm -hmm. just hopping back in against a guy that's, like, highly touted as probably being the future of the heavyweight division. I, man, at this point, I feel like it's, like, kind of, like, the biggest fight of my career for me right now. I put a lot of pressure on myself because I feel like um, the way my UFC career went, I feel like more than anything, I have a lot to prove to myself right now. Um mm -hmm. And I'm, I just got this gut feeling that just something crazy is going to happen. I, I feel like my best performance or either way, man, I'm just going there. And I'm, I tell you, everybody, this, this kill or be killed, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going there to take his head off or he's going to have to take me out to be me, man. He's gonna, like, I just, like, yeah, he's going to have to take me out, bro. Like, he's going to have to put, put my lights out, put me to sleep or something. But I'm coming, like, never before, man. I got a lot to prove to myself and... I'm, I'm excited for this one, man. I guess I don't know if I've been this excited for a fight in a long time, you know? So I, I just, I, and if he has the same mentality, man, if he, which I think he might, because I, I feel like he was disappointed in his last performance. Mm -hmm. He probably feels like he needs to prove something too, you know, the, the way that last fight went. So if it does, you know, we're both feeling that same way and we come out and we're both ready to same thing, kill or be killed. It could be one of yeah. those crazy fights, you know? But I feel like somebody's getting knocked out. Yeah, it seems like you have a lot of like, a lot of stuff bottled up. Yeah, no, there is, man. There. Yeah. there really is, man. You know, everyone who trains with me now, they see it, they see it, and mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. To yeah, put, putting on something, man. That yeah. I hope, I hope everyone who watches will be entertained by it as well. You know. Oh no doubt, man. You've put on so many entertaining fights in Ryzen, man. And you face some of the best, so it's. uh it's no doubt it's going to be a, a good one. Um, what 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 do you see with Ryzen? Do you see like the rest of you know like the next couple of fights you're going to be with them and and you're going to try to do something in that promotion? Um, you know, I I'm I'm re I'm being realistic with myself as far as my career goes. I don't I don't know how much longer I have fighting. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've had a lot of injuries. Of course, you know you want to be smart about taking too much like damage and of course head trauma right and stuff like that so i don't i don't know how much longer i have uh but it'd be nice man to you know maybe finish off my career there would be nice if they've made a heavyweight title or even another open weight grand prix to do and um yeah i at this point i feel like that's where i belong to finish out my career and kind of make the most of it you know make one last good run kind of like uh Aside from the way his career ended, but Krokop 
you know, the way he went out with that crazy win streak. Um, fortunately, he had a stroke, you know, and had to hang it up. But, like, I don't want to do something like that. Like, end on, like, a nice win streak and and uh, be even better if they had a heavyweight title to, to go after. I have a feeling, Ben, they're going to put something out there, something with the heavyweight division. You know what I mean? Something's yeah. going to happen in th- this year, I feel. Um, yeah, I feel like you belong with Ryzen, man. Like, that's what – like, I see you, and, you know, you fought in the UFC, but, you know – the rising fights is though the fights that I think of when I when I think of you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. The walkouts. Was, yeah. The ring. It seems like you look better. Like you you fit the ring for some reason. Like <laughs> yeah. The white canvas, right? Do you, yeah. do you feel that a little it, bit? Yeah. I feel, man, everything about fighting there feels just like it feels like home. You know, mm-hmm. other than fighting in Guam, I, I everywhere else I've went, it's, I've never got that same feeling. And then it goes back to like, man, I'm just kind of that old school style guy too like i like the old school style of pride you know and it's nostalgic for me still the opening ceremony is still brings back those those pride days and i, I probably look like that guy like hanging on to that you know like get over it man it's, that's past time but bro that's how i grew up you know like mm-hmm. everyone has those things that give that gives them that those memories of when they were younger and it just makes them happy mm-hmm. and that for me that's that's what Ryzen does for me and mm-hmm. and um Every time it feels that way. Every time I fight there, yeah, man. And you know, you know, like you, you have your own gym now, right? So you could have your own fighters, and then you would be, yeah, going with your fighters to rise in. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it just seems like the proper cycle of life, right? For yeah, for, yeah. You know, oh, your exactly. coach, you know, your coach was in Japan. You know what I mean? It's just like it just yeah. seems right. Yeah, for sure, like one hundred percent. Well, hey, man. You're still fighting though. That's what's important, right? April 30th, yeah. Ryzen Landmark Five. Go into descriptions, download the All Star app. Roki, man, thank you so much, man, for the time and uh, good luck in Tokyo. It's gonna be, it's gonna be yeah. a wild one, man. We know it. I uh, know. I feel it in my gut, man. But yeah, thanks again for having me. I know it's been a while, but hopefully we get a lot more of these again. You know, get get them going again. I feel like we will. So, yeah, thanks for having me again.